All right, so this is a pretty big moment for me, everybody. I get to see what he's working on. Now, literally called me not even two weeks ago. I don't even think it was two weeks. I want to be careful not to. Yeah, here, if you want, I can open it. Yeah? yeah? So if you see this, I had to tape like six boxes together to put these in here because originally I was going to cut them and then we we're going to put them back together. But I'm like, I don't want to do that. I would prefer if we just had it, uh, you know, on individual. This is why I'm glad you're here, dude. You're the problem solver. I'm the problem maker. So if everything went according to plan, there should be minimal damage on these. I tried to pack this up in the sun. Dude, this is, he, I already got a CD for my birthday, but what he doesn't realize is this is a birthday present too. Um, because I'm, I've been checking his channel out, hanging out, just seeing all the amazing things he can do. And now to actually have some of his uh, artistry here at the camp. It's a pretty big deal, man. Am I sucking up enough people? I think so. Gee, Tanner, you really did pack this thing up nice, man. This is one hell of an unboxing. People are freaking out. I'm gonna have to speed this up. sure we can touch up whatever there may be some minimal little scratches but you didn't you haven't um painted these have you yeah i did oh you did yeah wow thanks jerry Dude, I, I did it so we can get this build done in like two hours really so yeah. we he wants to spend a lot of his time uh in it's just your first time to florida i've never been to florida holy it's my first time being on an airplane too get out of here tanner yeah, are you serious yeah. holy smokes congratulations what the heck look at this jerry that's the back. Yeah, that's the door no part. And then way. That's the insert there. No way. So that's that all just clean. foam. That's just foam you buy from Home Depot, man. Isn't that Amazing. awesome? Yeah, he just melts it and cuts it and scars it. There's the door. Oh, wow. Are you serious? I really hope my measurements were good. <laughs> because as Jerry knows, I really don't know how to use a tape measure. But I think we'll be okay. That is incredible man and so you use oh my god you use dry lock huh yeah so i just tint it with various tints and then a bunch of dry brushes so this is probably maybe like 10 to 12 coats of paint wow to get that look all that's incredible yeah. so it feels a little flimsy but once you secure it to the tank that's gonna be cool it's pretty sturdy i love your aviators too thanks man. so cool you look I've, like someone out of Top Gun. They're they're more efficient because they cover your full your view. Full view so. yeah. Good deal. Anyway, we're learning so much about ultraviolet damage of the eyes, and yeah. we're also learning about how to make foam look like stone. So that's pretty cool. Wow, that's the door. Yeah. So awesome. I believe that a bird crapped on it while it was outside. Oh, drying, that's that's perfect, but... dude. There's going to be oh. lizard crap on it, yeah. so we're good. Here, yeah. flip it backwards. I want to show everyone. Look at that, guys. That's just. Good old Pink Panther insulation yep. from Home Depot, man. Um, can you believe he's able to turn that? Now, you know, what's cool is they also do this for model um, trains and stuff, you know? Yeah, like yeah. They'll scape foam to make it look like landscaping for, you know, people who do uh, hobbyists that do all kinds of, um, you know, model air, uh, airplanes or dioramas and things like that. So amazing. Uh, no, it's the other one. But oh, no. but that's pretty darn awesome. So you were able to create, did you glue other pieces onto this? Is that how you do it? Yeah, to create so, the three-dimensional look? So I started with the, the two-inch thick uh, XPS, and then I attached a few other pieces, just like offcuts that I had. Okay. And then around it, I did the expanding foam to kind of get like a little bit of a gradation okay. going. And so like, if you see the texture is slightly different, yep. that's where the expanded stuff that's is. That's right. Cause that stuff's a little bit different to carve. It I've is. noticed. Yeah. yeah. I don't like it as much. I feel like it's, it's harder to get the right detail, but I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. With, yeah. yeah. Very cool. This is amazing. And it's guys, it feels hard. It's nice. So he'll actually be able to dig his claws in here. And I like this little work here. You see this different textures, just like you'd find in actual stone. So there's really no, um, there's really no perfect way to do this. In fact, I think really the imperfection is what gives it that realistic look. 
don't get hung up on trying to make all these perfect details but just take a line you cut it down and then you slice a line here and then you texture it up with a wire brush you give it all these different grooves look at these pockets you can burn pockets into it that's awesome man i'm excited to see bobby rubino enjoying this and then this is going to be the final one and his favorite piece apparently yeah it's just i don't know it's always for whatever reason the first one's always the best okay i don't know why that is but this is the first one i think it was the best one and what tools are you using to carve this so i used a one of these okay for most of it um and well so I had it all, it was rough. I got one of those wire brush yep. like, drill bit attachments just to get like the shape. And then I went back with a knife to get all the all the rocky texture. Cause it kind of, the way it peels it back, it's just probably the easiest way to get the texture. Cool. And then to get all the cracks, I just got a, uh, like a soldering iron and just melted, straight through it. melted down. And then after all that, I get a pass with the heat gun, which kind of tightens up the foam. But then it also sorts of melts it and gets you a little more texture. So. Cool. And of course, if you guys don't know Tanner, if you guys have been maybe living under a rock in YouTube, uh, then you want to go to Surfer Designs on YouTube to see step by step how he creates all these beautiful scapes. And uh, it's just a really fun channel. Um, really enjoy the way you put things together, man, because it's so peaceful. I just love your whole demeanor, you know? It's like the Bob Ross of terrariums, dude. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Bob Moss. Bob Moss. Well, Bob Moss. Bob Ross, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what I'm saying. Well, He's a real artist. Yeah, well, that's what they call me, Bob Moss. It's like, oh, Bob Moss. Okay, Bob Moss, okay. I was going to say, Moss is more fitting, man. That is rad. I love it, guys. So these are going to have to be placed inside here. Now, this door is a little small in the back. So, I don't know. Tanner will have to come up with an interesting way. We may have to cut it and then reassemble them and use the foam again to kind of doctor it up. All right, everyone, we're gonna uh, get to work. Get ready for time-lapse. I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, what's going on? It's day two. There's Tanner. Two. I just his... took the bracing out. We had it all braced up. Yeah, cool. And uh, looks like it's set up pretty well. Oh, that's awesome, man. Perfect. So we also moved it, obviously, here is where it's going to be. But um, I think I've decided because we're using black, this color is so dark, it gets so hot. I want to see about removing this glass and instead using this wire. So that's going to be part of the project today. And of course, we're going to dress up the rest of it uh, and close the top and close the front. We're going to dress up the substrate. So get ready because uh, we should be done in just a few hours. Just See you in a bit. Hours. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh yeah, we are getting closer and closer to completion. I think it's looking awesome, Tanner. And yeah. it's so cool to just have him doing his thing. It's it's also I was saying it's fun because I, I I know we both work alone a lot. Yeah. So what's funny is I could be off cutting the wire for the, the front and top and all that, and Tanner's just doing his thing, being an artist and getting it ready. And I'm really excited about this next portion because um, you know, this is something, you know, that people love the bioactive setups yeah it's the lifeblood of the setup okay and what's great is we're outside so it's bioactive already yeah, pretty yeah, much huh yeah um so what did we do here talk to everyone and okay, tell them okay, what's so going on we, we put in all the escape and everything like that but that's not really what we, what we want to talk about so we got these rocks here that, and they look like this by the way um i'm i'm tethered because my battery is like messing up but uh there, I, I got these from a friend who was gonna throw them out. He just sent them to me, some landscape rock. Yeah. And you use the product called Dry Lock, huh? You... Yeah, yeah, so we foamed it in here just okay. so that way nothing could come out to kind of hold them in place too. And we just painted them black so that they're not in your face and really clashing with the walls here. Okay. Obviously they're a different color, but it's gonna, you're not gonna see it as much. So. Okay. That's nice. And then what we did is I went and you guys know that Fluker is a big uh, helper here of the camp. So I used three bricks of their compressed coconut bark and uh, that bedding. We rehydrated it and I mixed in some of their Repta bark, uh, three bags of the Repta bark as well. And so then Tanner um, kind of, it's funny, you guys saw what I did to Guapo and Lolo's cage. I took just leaf litter and threw it on the ground. I was like, why am I buying from mulch? Yeah. I've got plenty of mulch everywhere. Like, yeah. so we've taken it one step further or you've taken it one step further explain what's going on yeah so with we, this. we did a couple of things here so first of all we dug up just some soil that he had underneath of a leaf litter up front and it's all clean it also has sand in there so it'll help with drainage but you'll see we mixed in all this leaf litter too and what this will do is as we add earthworms and other little critters in here they'll break up the leaves and that will be put it back the nutrients from the leaves will be put back into the soil okay and then you'll get the soil improvement so we'll add nitrogen and things like that to it for the plants and show me what you have over here some so, of the palm fronds yeah, I also or palm got, boots rather yeah palm boots and what we'll do is we'll kind of bury them in cover some of them up maybe even just have some on top and so that will create refuge for the worms the isopods whatever kind of things are in there they can hide under here they'll eat it and then that will also aid in the um, soil improvement and even I don't really know if he'll do it but he can kind of hide in these yep. and be cryptic on the bottom and just feel secure so if, if you have all kinds of coverage on the ground up above he's going to utilize all of it even even if he's not an animal that's that is typically thought of doing those things you'll see that if you add different things in the enclosure your animals are likely going to use that's it, right so. they'll exploit all aspects of it and they are reptiles he used a great word they are very cryptic they feel secure when they're pressed against something they like to feel yeah. their bodies tight against something that's how they know they're hidden right and and you'll all, all reptiles are slightly different but after you've worked with them and amphibians and animals of that nature for so long you'll notice similar behaviors in them and so although some might be arboreal or display different characteristics in that regard you'll you just kind of get a feel for it cool if that makes sense all right you know what i mean i totally dig it man i love that I, we're geeking out here this week so i'm really excited so do you want to go ahead and throw some of this in there or how do we want to do it uh, oh, oh by the way guys i've also kind of used the knit wire i've stapled it here to the bottom so some of these were ports for the previous zoo was using them uh, you know in an aquatic uh capabilities or capacity and so i don't know what are we up to next Stump it in. All right, go for it. You have the honors, man. This is a, a Serpa design. He's going to set up, and you guys are going to be able to watch this step-by-step -step video on on Tanner's channel as well, Serpa Designs. If you don't follow him, which I think pretty much everyone who watches this channel does, um, you guys are going to want to check him out. So if you just found me and you're looking for another really cool uh, guy that loves his animals and is really an artist when it comes to scaping terrariums and bioactive setups, then you're definitely going to want to follow Serpa Designs on YouTube. YouTube. So this is great, man. Look at that. That is so cool. So. so that's what I always say, like a good mix. It's just going to be a combination of different things because when you're outside, basically the soil is just different things decomposed right. in, into a single thing. 
And so when you get this, it's, it's natural. It sort of holds humidity pockets in different areas. And it's also gonna drain well. So that way you don't get some kind of stagnant soil. Right, or a mono soil. You want, yeah. you want it to be kind of, I believe the term is a, uh, a homogeneous mixture of all these different, um, different, uh, like you said, different barks and things like this so that it's truly nutrient because we're going to plant plants in here as well yeah yeah so this is going to be neat man because um this lizard is not a vegetarian so these plants are actually going to grow right. and provide refuge for him as well and he's not really going to eat them he may damage them by walking on them but again you know bobby rubino look there's an earthworm already right. oh, yeah, yeah there's an earthworm see so when we were digging we got earthworms so we're basically inoculating this habitat and with the, uh, bioactivity there's also which most people don't really talk about when you think of bioactive but there's also bacteria colonies cool and here and i mean <laughs> through and through bacteria pretty much controls how everything works that's like, right in your gut and whatever else they so. are the most uh, abundant thing on the planet uh, as far as life microbes are the most abundant uh being that you being i don't know living organism, <laughs> yeah. living organism that you can find on earth because you know we are so um you know addicted to the macro world yeah. uh but the microscopic world is far superior and far more vast than uh the world in which we live in so it's truly a micro universe and there was a really cool documentary years and years and years ago called microcosmos you might be able to find it on youtube but With it was really box. cool yes that was my favorite movie growing up yeah see you and i have a lot to bond on bud like that I, brain, I just i think that's part of yeah man i yeah. think that's just part of why we like this is you get to create these worlds and you know he and i were getting really um esoteric and ethereal earlier talking about that there are no ordinary moments that when you stop to look at nature Nature, there's always something very interesting going on and I think that's what most of you guys follow along for I think you guys enjoy the fact that you get to see into this hidden world when you love these type of animals you know and that to me is pretty exciting you know it's something that I geek out on and so it's been fun hanging out with Tanner and learning from him and then finding out how much we really have in common so awesome stuff there's your uh I mean that's great we're gonna get a water dish in there for him maybe I'll put uh we'll get some more that he can hide under like a hide that he feels secure on yeah. i know i have these fluker hides that look like stone heck we might even be able to paint them black i was honestly thinking like if we could bury one under the substrate we can do here, that so it's like a little cave yeah yeah we could do that i've got some flat rock and some bricks yeah we could do something simple like that or actually i can make a tunnel With the corrugated stuff. the corrugated stuff all right we're gonna get to that next guys so we're having so much fun i hope you guys are enjoying this video uh we'll be back in a little bit or well, we're gonna keep going actually but <laughs> we won't stop here we go Yes, people, look at this enclosure, man. Bobby Rubino is gonna be stoked. This thing looks amazing, and it's all because of that dude right there. What's I up? can't thank you enough, man. Yeah. We totally uh, nailed this. You yeah, inspired so. me, man. Just seeing how you work and just seeing um, your method, it's really unlocked a lot of ideas for me because I've dabbled in this, yeah. um, you know, with carving foam and things like that, and this is really 
um, you know, learning from you has been tremendous because as you know, we have more of these enclosures, guys, and I'm thinking maybe this is a cool area we could call this reptile row and I can kind of get them all situated out here. And uh, they're just beautiful and they're fun to do, man. Like, you know, you, you take your time. We, we hustled through this pretty quick, Had you know? To. Yeah, we, we really, he's filming for his video too, as you can see, but we nailed this, man. We, he had pre-cut and scaped the, uh, or carved the cement, rather the uh, foam to make it look like rock. Uh, we placed it in here. Look at this, guys. We got some, just some normal grasses, man. Uh, they really dressed it up. Some air plants that we found around my property, some bromeliads. Um, these trunks were from a tree that got knocked down in a storm. The leaf litter, mango leaves. We got the Fluker water bowl. We used the Fluker Eco Earth and their Repta Bark. Um, some of the corrugated tubing I have. Actually, we, we created a U-shaped hide. So you can go in one end and then comes through it completely and comes out the other side over here. Um, that's fantastic. You know, he's gonna get larger. I don't suspect he'll be in here for more than a year. That would be a long time if you ask me, but this gives him plenty of opportunities. To, he's got a rock in there to bask on. The morning light is gonna hit this side of the enclosure. And if there wasn't a big rain cloud on the other side, uh, you'd see that this side of the enclosure is gonna take some sunlight. So he can use these branches that Tanner has set up. Uh, morning during the hottest part of the day he's gonna hide into his retreat but this is just tremendous but guys look at the detail look at the detail on this foam that is foam so it's gonna last the weatherproofing dry lock is on it um you know oh hold on one second someone always calls me it's probably my beloved i love you i'll see you in a little bit all right guys sorry about that but i always pick up for the wifey so uh anyway she's on her way home she's going to be pretty psyched but you see simply just the little staples holding this in it's going to grow over it these little roots are going to anchor themselves onto the bark here and life's going to take place we got earthworms in there so anytime he poops there's going to be food i'll tell you what let's leave this open i think it's time for tanner and i to uh go get bobby rabino what do you guys think yeah he is because he thinks here's bobby over here i've been feeding them over here you feed them like through the through the thing yeah i'll just feed them hey bobby i'll tell you what buddy i'm gonna go get some food let's go get some fluke or grasshoppers that they sent me and i'll kind of reward them for coming over to me and then we'll put them in the new enclosure and we'll go ahead and maybe give them some food in the new enclosure and let them know this is going to be his new place we're start we got to clean up this mess um there has been a lot of activity here I'm so thankful that I actually have friends like Tanner and I have a place we can work out of the weather. As you can see, rain's a coming. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw you guys up on this little cage. I'm gonna open this and I love this food because I don't like keeping live crickets here because they don't really stay alive in our heat down south. I'd have to keep them indoors. And uh, Kate is not a fan of crickets running around indoors and neither am I. So the cool thing is, is they have these nice uh, kind of vacuum packed grasshoppers and crickets and roaches and I use them all so want to shout out my friends at flukers for keeping me going and that's really cool because you know with Bobby Rubino and Inky um, they're both small and they need that variety in their diet uh, so basically guys this provides that so Tanner's on the outside I'm over here I look at this little box turtle now we have to be careful where we're walking in here so we don't step on any little box turtles we're into uh john's hangout but john is there's his head you want to see john guys you get to see what our bobby rabino is going to look like there's john hey john he knows he knows yeah all right sorry oh so when they're young like this would you say that the insect protein is better than something oh yeah like insects or... yeah they're going to be eating insects uh in fact they really can't digest um, being that their intestines are small and they don't really digest fur so they can't pass it So what happens is uh, they can get impacted. So I feed them some pinky mice uh, But you don't want to just feed them pinky mice because those those mice themselves their bones haven't uh, Kind of solidified. So yeah. um, you want to make sure you're giving them a bunch of different foods. Hey, hey knucklehead See, I he wants he to be, this. he wants to be in Tanner's video. He doesn't even want to be in our videos anymore. He's Look like, at I that. I want to be in 4K. Yeah, there you go. Come on, here we go. Here we go. Here he is. There's my little boy. Come on. There it is. It's right there. That's Rubino. Can you believe, guys, that Bobby Rubino was near death just a few months back, and here we have him. Oh, Bobby, don't bite me. Hey, Bobby. 
What are you doing, you man? He's such a maniac. I'll tell you what, let's just grab the little maniac. Yeah, he's all black throat. He's a Looney Tune. So we'll go ahead and grab him. I gotta, you guys, you suffer through my filming all the time. We're gonna go ahead and just grab this. Okay, we got the food. We got the dude. And uh, you're not coming in here, buddy. You're locked out. Okay, Tanner was trying to get in. Did you lock it from here? I locked it from the inside. So let's go ahead and lock this. This is it, man. This is him going in a really cool uh, habitat that was designed by our friend Tanner. And I'm really excited, man. You see how I film, buddy? Not quite like Tanner. He's all profesh. I'm just kind of rolling through. I did the best I can. I wouldn't say it's profesh. I don't know, dude. It's looking pretty, pretty awesome. So there he is, Bobby Rubino. And he's gotten so big, and just a few months ago, this guy was almost dead. So this is a big treat. So guys, look at this cage. Come on, Bobby. Here we go. Are you ready, Tanner? Are you there? Where are you setting up? I'm gonna just set him right down on the ground and let him do. Look, buddy. Look, buddy. Oh no, he smells the food. He still smells the food. So let's let's make him happy. He's like, where am I? Where am I? Look, look, look. There it is. Is he gonna eat right away, do you think? I think he will. Oh gosh, look, he's, I don't want him to get out of here. Come here, come here, Rubino. Let me get you some food right away. There, there's some food, dude. There's some food, dude. I gotta get my tongs. Look at him going exploring already. Is he motivated by movement or is it just the smell? I think it's the movement and smell. It's, uh, he's overstimulated at the moment. Look at this. Guys, we can actually throw these food, this food, anywhere and he can kind of just oh look he's already going into that house is this going to be the quickest video ever <laughs> oh man we look at come him back later yeah how awesome is that though guys he just found the hide immediately found our little hide that is too cool man i'd say it was a good sign too that he wasn't like going you know just crazy when he went in he just casually yes walked in so it's not like we stressed him out by transfer not at all no the cool thing is that being when he was sick he was handled so much by me sure. that i think he's really understanding that i'm kind of a friend um so what's cool guys is i mean look at all this oh thanks buddy i got all kinds of bugs on me but look at how awesome this looks is this not amazing and here while you're back here one of the things i tried to do was the way that this is, is it's all kind of secluded back here. Okay. So my thought was, is like, you could see him hiding back here, but it's a place where he'll still feel secure. Right. It's kind of cool. Oh, he's coming out. Is he coming out the other side? Yeah, he's digging around. Oh, look at that, guys. Oh, I think Bobby loves it here. There's just so much to stimulate him. And, you know, we were talking at lunch about, you know, what's the purpose of all this? It's to stimulate the proper behaviors for all of these animals. Um, you know, obviously these are lizards that live in Africa and they live in kind of drier grasslands and, you know, dry forests and a lot of different habitats. So we've got some grasses, we've got some, you know, branches for him to climb on. We've got rocks. Uh, I've put the food in there. There's the dried crickets, so uh, rather grasshoppers. So yeah, he's gone in. This is gonna be, under here, man, is just a nice tube that he's just gonna utilize. So I am really, really thrilled. And buddy, you just did awesome, man. I, I, can't, I can do. I, I really just can't thank you enough. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you think of what Tanner uh, did for us here at the camp? We love it. Um, I think Tanner and I are gonna try and get together at least once a year yeah. and do something fun. At least once a year, yeah. It, it's kind of nice. It's hard to travel when you have a ton of animals. Uh, I have people that could be responsible and take care of them, obviously, but I don't like to put that burden on them. And it's also like, that's, I know they know how to handle things on a best case scenario. If something goes wrong, really, I'm the only one who knows how to remedy right, the situation. Exactly. But it'd be great. What do you guys think? Um, I mean, I want him back. This guy's awesome, man. So we had fun. This is cool. Uh, our little buddy is going to be doing great. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a little time lapse. And we're going to just let this guy walk around this enclosure. And you're going to get to see it. Thanks so much, Tanner. This was so much fun. Maybe we'll be able to sneak another video out. Maybe we can go looking for snakes or something here. Uh, but either way, go check out Tanner. His channel is Serpent Designs on YouTube. Follow him on Instagram, TikTok, Serpent Designs. Uh, we'll have a link in the description. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video build. Thanks so much, guys. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. So long. Later.